We we'll are singing out of the Grace Songbook this evening. You'll turn to number 548. 548. And uh, this came in uh, from Leslie Bolte through Bob and Lisa Gilhausen. It was kind of a lengthy one, so we couldn't get it on the announcement sheet concerning her, uh, the uh, issues that she's having. Uh, I'll just read it verbatim. She asked us to do this. Uh, so in the CT of the, uh, of the chest, they found a three to four millimeter nodule in her right pulmonary lung. And she has uh, most of her blood work back, but is still waiting some more blood work and an appointment with a neuro neurologist uh, this week and more neurological testing on September the 19th. She says here, please pray because uh, and she's in a lot of pain, both hips, spine, and her ribs. And she thanks all for remembering her in prayer. So again, that's Leslie Bolte. So let's continue to pray on her behalf that, uh, that all goes better for her. Number 548, 548, the lily of the valley. I found a friend in Jesus, he's everything to me. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. The lily of the valley, in him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make me fully. Seven hundred eleven. Seven hundred eleven. Blessed be the time. We'll sing this and ask Brother Bob Gailhausen to lead us in, in prayer after the singing of this song. Blessed be the
pray. <clears throat> Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful for this beautiful day that you bless us with and, and the nice weather you've given us to enjoy. And we're especially thankful that we're able to be here this evening to worship you and have fellowship with one another and hear another message of your word. Father, we just ask that you be with Brother Ryan as uh, he delivers that message this evening and that he can remember what he has prepared and delivered in a way that we can understand it and apply it to our lives. Father, especially be with those that were mentioned earlier and are uh, in, in need of different help from you and in different situations. Um, we are thankful that Jim's back home and we especially want to remember Leslie Bolte at this time. She's dealing with many issues and terrible pain and awaiting more test results and will be undergoing more tests also. So we just pray that you will be with her. Father, we uh, also we uh, pray that our, the walk for water will be a, uh, will go well and be a great success that we can meet our goal and be able to help those in need of uh, a well for water. And Father, we uh, just ask that you continue to be with our efforts in the World Bible School and in different ways to try to reach those and, and bring more souls to you. Father, just be with us now as we worship you. And, and Father, we're just so thankful for all that you give us every day. Forgive us for our sins. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you mark number 939, 939 with the song of invitation following Ryan's lesson this evening. I ask you to turn to number 129. 129. We'll sing this before the lesson. See everyone who is here this evening. I'm gonna make sure this puppy's turned up. I thought I was turning this thing up this morning and I turned it way down. So you all noticed that. Y'all should have said, hey, you turned it down. But anyways, yeah, I noticed it on the video when I was putting that on YouTube today. So 
So sorry uh, about uh, this morning's video to everybody at home. Uh, sorry if you could not hear me too well when uh, we went away from the mic. Hopefully it's a little bit better um, with, with this thing now. But nonetheless, we will, we will carry on. It's good to see everyone uh, that have made it out this evening. And I always appreciate your efforts uh, whenever you're here for uh, another hour of worship and, and Bible study. And I know uh, more importantly than me, uh, I know that God uh, appreciates all of us being here. We are continuing our, our time together talking about, um, talking about sequel servants. And so today we're going to be, if I can get this to work, today we're going to be talking about Onesimus. Uh, Onesimus is another one of those individuals that uh, is not talked a whole lot uh, about in the Bible. There's a very small section about him, uh, but uh, the story to me is uh, interesting uh, nonetheless. But what we're going to find in our story tonight is just... The, the amazing power of the gospel, uh, so much so that it can bring both slave and master together under the unity of Christ. Now, the pages that we find, or the page, I should say, that we find in the letter to Philemon um, is one that uh, has sparked a lot of intrigue has caused uh, some to justify slavery and, and stuff like that. Uh, and that's not what this book is about whatsoever. As a matter of fact, when there were those that would use Philemon as a justification for owning slaves in America, they forgot that the system that Philemon was under was more of a, uh, was a bond servant uh, situation. It wasn't one to where there was a whole bunch of abuse going on uh, to those who uh, acted or served as slaves or bond servants under their masters. So maybe I didn't need to bring that up or need to talk about it, but uh, I always think it's a, an interesting discussion uh, whenever we think about that there was and sometimes still are discussions on justifying uh, human slavery um, in the same way that it took place uh, in this country years ago. And I, I just don't think that, this, that the book of Philemon does that. But I do want to go to Philemon chapter 1. There is only one chapter, so it shouldn't be hard uh, to find this one. Philemon chapter 1, verses 10 through 14. And that's where our main text is going to be from uh, this evening. Verses 10 through 14, if you'll read along with me. I appeal to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. Formerly, he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful to you and to me. I am sending him back to you, sending my very heart. I would have been glad to keep him with me, in order that he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I preferred to do nothing without your consent in order that your goodness might not be by, my, not, might not be by compulsion, but of your own accord. For this perhaps is why he was parted from you for a while that you might have him back forever, no longer as a bondservant, but more than a bondservant, as a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So here we see Paul making an appeal, making a request to a man named Philemon, understand that he was a slave of Philemon according to Philemon 1 and verse 16. As a matter of fact the name Onesimus itself uh, was common among slaves. It was something that was usually uh, dubbed or, or given to 
a slave because of what the name means. And so what does Onesimus, Onesimus means? All right. What does Onesimus mean? It means useful or beneficial. And so whenever someone had a bondservant, obviously a bondservant that was faithful, one that did uh, their job as a bondservant should do, they were often called Onesimus because they were useful and beneficial. Here's the interesting thing, though, about Onesimus. He was useful and beneficial to Philemon at first, but something would happen to change that. And we'll talk about that in just a moment about uh, what most of this letter is all about and, and what had taken place to make, to make Onesimus not so useful. Something else that we know is that Onesimus was originally from the city of Colossae. As a matter of fact, when Paul is writing Philemon, he's writing Philemon individually, but the letter goes to Philemon in the city of Colossae, because that's where they were from. So we know that Philemon and we know that Onesimus would have had ties, would have been connected to and been a part of the church at Colossae. More so Philemon at this point. Uh, he was a Christian at that particular church and at that particular time. The scripture there says, uh, and with him Onesimus, our faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you? They will tell you of everything that has taken place here. So uh, we know that when Paul wrote to the Colossian church, Onesimus was actually a Christian, was already a Christian, and was sent there as part of a group of individuals to encourage that church. So that's most assuredly where he was from. And we talked a while ago about the name Onesimus and what it means. It means useful. And one thing we do know is that Paul would say that Onesimus was useful to him. Onesimus is useful to me. But I want us to think about where Onesimus had come from. Obviously, we know the city he came from. We know that he was Philemon's slave. But what sparked Paul to write this letter to Philemon? It's because Onesimus had actually become a rebellious runaway. He had run away from Philemon. All right, he had gotten out of there. Now, I mentioned a while ago that slavery and, and servitude or being a bond servant wasn't the same as what we typically understand it to be over here in the United States. That's not to say, that's not to say that things didn't go bad sometimes. It's not to say that people always treated their slaves fairly, but also sometimes slaves or bond servants just didn't want to be a slave or bond servant anymore. And so when they found a way to escape, they would do so. And this is exactly what Onesimus uh, did. In Philemon 1 and verse 11, Paul makes this statement. He says, formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful both to you and to me. So he had gone against, um, here's what's interesting about uh, what Onesimus had done. He had actually gone against uh, the instruction that Paul would later give to the church at Colossae who had a contingent of Christians that were worshiping at that church that had bond servants. I do not believe that Philemon was the only one that had bond servants. Uh, there was a commonality to that in both the Greek and the Jewish culture. So there were uh, Jews and Jewish Christians who did have bond servants. And then there were also Greeks 
that had the same thing. We understand from our studies that um, a lot of that would happen when there would be ro wars or conflict uh, from varying nations. Oftentimes the, the victorious nation would take for themselves bond servants from those conquered nations. In many cases, as part of the surrender and as part of keeping their life, people would vow themselves in servitude to their conquerors so that they could, they and their family could live in safety. Maybe even you could say, get their feet back off the ground uh, to, to be able to, to gain some things back that, that they had lost. But this bond servitude uh, would have been somewhat normal at the time in several of the cultures. Onesimus, however, was one that ran away from it. Uh, going back uh, to our lesson and what we're talking about, uh, when Paul would later write to the church at Colossae, with Onesimus mentioned in that particular letter, he, he gives mention of the relationship that ought to be there between slave and master or servant and master. He says in Colossians 3 and verse 22, bond servants obey in everything those who are your earthly masters, not by way of eye service as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. And so Paul would mention to them, if you truly fear the Lord, you are going to respect those who rule over you and be good bond servants. Let your bond servitude to human beings mirror and reflect the servitude that you are to give and to have toward Jesus Christ. And so, honestly, if you are a servant at that time, that ought to be helpful in your walk with Christ, right? Right? understanding what it means uh, to obey those who, who are in charge over you. But we also know that uh, as he was a runaway, uh, going from bond servitude and, and running away from that and going, going against that edict of bond servants obey in everything those who rule over you, Onesimus disobeyed that, all right? But... According to Philemon 1 and verse 10, we know that Onesimus became a son to Paul. He had become a son to Paul. Philemon 1 verse 10, and then we'll look at verse 13 as well. He says, I appeal to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. Now, the interesting thing about the language here, we can't see this in English, but whenever you look at the Greek terminology here, the same words are used here for Onesimus became my son and I became his father. It's the same words that would indicate an actual physical or natural birth. And so Paul is likening that father-son relationship to the real deal, all right? Uh, to it being a biological fatherhood, in a sense. So all that tells us is how strongly Paul feels about his fatherhood over Onesimus. They had a special relationship. This is, even being so as Paul was a prisoner in Rome. In verse 13... He would say, I would have been glad to keep him or keep Onesimus with me in order that he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment for the gospel. So he was a runaway slave that uh, took matters into his own hands uh, when it came to being a bondservant under Philemon. And then somewhere along the way, we understand that Onesimus became a Christian and began to serve the Lord and follow Paul through, uh, through the things that Paul was doing. Not only that, as we were talking about the fact that he went with a group of guys back to Colossae. All right? We kind of have this going on. I don't really know the timelines here, 
But what this would seem to suggest is that at the same time, this group of men were delivering the letter to the church at, at Colossae, to the Colossian church, that Onesimus had in his hand the letter to Philemon as well. Okay, so find that kind of, that, find that kind of interesting. So Onesimus was like a son to Paul. You can imagine that with that being the case, Paul sincerely wanted to talk to Philemon about what happens to Onesimus from this point forward. Because as Onesimus had done wrong, and part of that wrong was actually running away from Philemon, as a child of God, Paul would want Onesimus to make those things right. And so Paul, uh, through all of this, wanted everything to be made right, but he would, in his letter, encourage forgiveness from Philemon. He would want Philemon to forgive Onesimus from running away. But along with that, in order for that forgiveness to happen... It would start with Onesimus' repentance, okay? It would start with his repentance. And we think about um, what he would need to do. We saw that passage in uh, Colossians 3 and verse 22. Virtually the same thing was written by Paul to the church at Ephesus. And this would go along with, uh, with what with what Onesimus had done wrong and what he would need to correct. It says in Ephesians 6, 5, Bondservants, obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling, with a sincere heart, as you would Christ. And so, obviously, reconciliation is something that needed to take place here. Paul would already state, as we already read, he would rather just keep Onesimus with him. He would rather keep Onesimus with him to continue serving him as a son in Christ and continue doing the work alongside Paul. But even Paul says, you know what? That's not really right. That's not really right of me to do. There needs to be some reconciliation here uh, between these two because obviously there's going to be some natural resentment on the part of Philemon that one of his bondservants who had a job in his home uh, just up and, and, and left him. And so something else uh, would need to happen here. And it would, it would end with Philemon putting the past behind him. Now maybe it was... A God thing, very well could have been a God thing for Onesimus to leave in the first place. And I believe that's exactly what Paul tells Philemon. When we look at verses 15 and 16, he says, For this perhaps is why he was parted from you for a while, that you might have him back forever. No longer as a bondservant, but more than a bondservant, as a beloved brother. Especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. He was encouraging through this letter, and I would encourage you to read the whole letter for yourself. But he would encourage Philemon. Onesimus is, is a fellow brother in Christ now. Receive him back, not just as your bondservant, but receive him back as your brother in Christ. I would love to have been, I don't know if you'd call it a fly on the wall or whatever, uh, in that congregation after this letter was received. Would it have been where Philemon and his family were there. And then Philemon's bondservants sat there 
with Him in the same worship service together, praising God together. Well, that's the picture that Paul lays out for Philemon. Saying this is how it needs to be now. He's your brother in Christ. Treat him as a brother in Christ. That includes that you need to forgive him for running away. Allow him to come back. Don't be harsh with him. Understand the good that he has done for the Lord as he has come to be with me. Now receive him as you would your own brother. Because that's exactly what he was. It started with Onesimus' repentance, but it needed to end with Philemon putting the past behind with his forgiveness. And with that, I want us to think about another passage from the letter that was written to the Colossian church. And as you think about that, as we read the Colossian letter, these are the same words that were said in the midst of the entire congregation at Colossae as far as our relationship with one another. The two of them would have heard these words within the same church assembly. Colossians 3 and verse 13 says, Bear with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. How powerful would that have been to somebody like Philemon? Who, by the way, I want to make sure that he doesn't sound like he's a, a, a mean old shrewd or anything like that. Paul continually in his letter would talk about the faithfulness of Philemon. On how much he respects him. And how he says in the letter, I'm not going to be bold with you. I'm going to encourage you because I believe that you'll do the right thing. Sounds kind of like what my parents used to do to me as a teenager sometimes. They were like, you know what? We're not going to tell you no in this situation, but we know you'll do the right thing. All right, now when mom and dad says that, what do you usually try to do? <laughs> try to do the right thing because you don't want to disappoint them. And maybe that was what ended up happening for Philemon. But I think Paul had faith in him to do what was right. You know, this is a, just a, a short, short story, uh, but it does speak a lot to the relationships that we ought to have in Christ Jesus, where they were also told there is neither Jew nor Greek there is neither slave nor free, for all are one in Christ Jesus. I believe this story of Philemon and Onesimus, this letter that was written, is the ultimate example. The, you know, Philemon was put through the ultimate test, was he not? And I guess you could say Onesimus was as well. They were put through this ultimate test of what those words mean. There is neither slave nor free. All are one in Christ Jesus. Paul tells Philemon, you and Onesimus need to show that to the world. And I think it's great. I think it's awesome how God uses regular, ordinary people to show us examples like that. I think we can see those types of things. Um, among ourselves, uh, whenever we live out the things that the Bible tells us to do. So I guess this was a story, or this was a sermon on not showing that partiality. That whenever we become brothers and sisters in Christ, we are, in fact, given the same mercy, we're given the same forgiveness. And it's the same mercy and forgiveness that we ought to extend and bestow on everyone else 
around us. And I hope that we will do that, not just today, but tomorrow and the next day as well. I'm going to offer an invitation this evening, a little bit early of an invitation, so you can just be thankful for that. But if you're here tonight, maybe, I know we have this discussion a lot, but maybe you do have trouble with forgiveness. Maybe you feel like the way that somebody wronged you before, you're in time. So I pray that we'll all develop that attitude uh, that we'll desire that for everybody. If you're here tonight and you're struggling with something like that, or maybe you're here struggling with other sins in your life that you just can't shake, you need the prayers of the congregation. That's why, that's one of the reasons why we meet together. Pray together to hold one another, to encourage one another. We want to do that for you tonight if you have that need. Uh, if you need to be restored to the church, if you need to repent of some sins, uh, we're here for that as well. And we'd love to pray for you as a congregation. If you're here and uh, you're not yet a child of God, obviously that opportunity is given at all times. But if you know what you need to do to obey the gospel, you know that you are a sinful person in need of the grace of Jesus. Then why not come and confess your faith, repent of your sins, be baptized into Christ so that you can have those sins washed away and you can begin a new life with Jesus. Would you come now as we together stand and as we sing? Oh, do not let the word depart and close within the audience that wishes to partake of the Lord's Supper? Okay, bow with me, please. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Lord's Day. We thank you for the opportunity that we have at this time to partake of the, the Lord's Supper, the bread which to us represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray that you will be with those that partake, that they may do so in a way and manner that is pleasing unto you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Bow with me, please. Our Heavenly Father, we continue to thank you for the opportunity of being, being together. At this time, we thank you for the uh, fruit of the vine, which to us as Christians represents the blood that was shed by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray that those partake will do so in a pleasing way. 
It's through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, it's great to see everyone out this evening. We're happy to have you here, those who are joining online as well. Uh, continue to pray for those we mentioned earlier that are needing prayers and uh, waiting on tests and recuperating from various things in their lives. I want to remember uh, that uh, Friday, Ryan's asked if you could help out with uh, Walk for Water, the pre set up for that. Uh, you get with him, let him know. Uh, Ryan, did you say that there's a sign up sheet for that? Uh, there is not. Okay. Uh, Okay. That's the main thing I would say you need help with. Okay. So everything get, else has been lined up for, I think, and we're good to go. Okay. I'll get with Ryan or Casey if you can help out, just to kinda of let them know and what time works best and um, you all can get together to to do that. And then of course Saturday morning, I think it's eight fifteen, uh, according to be here, eight fifteen. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. Well, everyone uh, remember that. If you can't be here to walk, uh, pray about it. If you can be here and can't walk and like to encourage, be there, be there as well. So Saturday morning before, let's say around 8.30, and that would probably cover it. I, I say if you can't walk, stay in talk. Stay in talk. <laughs> Walk the walk or talk the talk, whatever. Okay, well, that's great, a great uh, opportunity for us, and so uh, we'll, uh, we're looking forward to that. So remember, Wednesday evening, we'll be together at 7.30, or 7, rather, for midweek Bible study, and then again next Sunday for our Bible study and worship service. I ask you to stand at this time and then ask Dave if he'll dismiss us, please. Let us pray. Almighty Father in heaven, Father, we're thankful, Father, for this day you gave us. We're thankful, Father, for the lessons we received throughout this day, and we're grateful, Father, for, for, for these. We ask you to be with each one of us as we go about this week to guide us and use this information in order to better do your, your will. We ask that you be with the ones that have been mentioned that are dealing with illnesses. Please continue to be with, with um, Jim Hands as well as with Leslie Bolte. And we pray your blessings upon each each one of them. We're grateful, Father, for your, your love. We thank you, Father, for your Son. And through him we give you thanks and praise. Amen.